In this video, we're going to talk about the tangent secant theorem, which, as the title says, talks about a tangent and a secant to a circle and the relationships that the lengths of those line segments have. Um, it's a relationship a little bit like the chord theorem, a little bit like the tangent theorem, I suppose. Um, and once again, it's just applying the ideas we've developed and some triangle proofs in order to be able to um, have a deeper understanding of the relationship between the lengths of these line segments. So let's take a look at the uh, diagram that I have here in GeoGebra. So here, you'll, you'll understand this diagram over here on the right in a second, but for the moment, just focus on the one in the center. So here's a circle with a center at A, and we've got an external point at D, and we've got a tangent to the circle, which has a point of tangency at B, and then we have a secant, which intersects the circle at C and at E. And so what we want to do is we want to come up with a relationship between this length db, dc, and this chord length over here. And we start, as we often do, by adding a couple of line segments just to have some triangles because triangles are kind of the foundation of the, uh, of the proofs we've been able to do up to this point. And the other thing I want to do is, because <clears throat> it's a little hard to see the relationship between the two triangles, I made just a carbon copy here on the right, um, just so it's a little bit easier to, um, to see the two triangles at the same time. And so if you played around with this diagram on GeoGebra, like I asked you to, um, you may have seen a lot of relationships between angle sizes. And so you may have come up with the conjecture that this small triangle involving uh, the point of intersection of the two lines and kind of the inside chord. And this triangle right here have a lot of angles in common. So they might not look it, but these two triangles are similar to each other. So let's see if we can come up with a really kind of cut and dried proof that would convince us of that. So the way that we normally prove that two triangles are similar to each other is by showing that those two triangles have two pairs of congruent angles. So what congruent angles do we see between the triangle on the left and the triangle on the right? Well, I hope the first one is kind of obvious. They both have this angle right here. They're the same size because in fact, they're the same angle. They only look like they're not the same angle because they're two separate triangles. You know, I've got two separate uh, copies of the same diagram, but they both have this angle D in common. So that's the reflexive property saying that those two angles are congruent to each other. The other one is a little harder to see, and it requires uh, a little bit of the, um, of the exercise I asked you to do on the first page of the inquiry. But if we look at this angle right here, which is 39.2 degrees, and we look at this angle here, angle E, we will see in this case, that they are both the same size. And that is not an accident. We can see that that's true because of what I call the tangent chord, or, uh, yes, the tangent chord theorem. And the tangent chord theorem says, let's take a look at the arc that is intercepted by angle B in this triangle. Well, it's this arc from B to C that's inside that angle. How about angle E in this copy down here? Well, this is an inscribed angle, and this also subtends that same arc. Now, things are a little different because this shaded angle over here in this triangle, this is not an inscribed angle because uh, the vertex is on the boundary of the circle, and one of the endpoints is. The other one isn't. But this second line is a tangent. And what the tangent chord theorem says is it says that this angle kind of behaves like an inscribed angle in the sense that since this angle and this angle over here both subtend the same arc, they must be congruent to each other. 
So what we have here, <clears throat> excuse me, is that the two triangles are similar by the AA similarity theorem. And because of that, we can set up some proportions between the sides. So let me set to work on that. So the first thing that we'll look at is in this triangle, we've got this side DB. All right, and DB in this triangle is the, well, let me try doing this without without recoloring things because I wasn't really set up for that. Um, so in this triangle, we have DB, which is the side that connects our two similar angles. Over here, DE is the corresponding side between angle D and the other congruent angle. And then on this triangle, the other, tri the other side that is adjacent to D is going from D to C. And in this triangle, the other tr uh, side that is adjacent to D is going from D to B. And so because of those uh, corresponding sides in the similar triangles, we can set up the relationship that DB is to DC, the two sides in this triangle have the same proportion as the two corresponding sides in the other one, which is DE to DB. And so if we cross multiply the same way we have with the chord theorem, that leads us to what we normally see as written as the tangent secant theorem, which is that DB squared is equal to DC times DE. All right, so let me kind of go back to where we were before, where I took out a couple of these sides and maybe I'll take out a couple of these angles as well. All right, so what we have here when we're looking at DB squared is we're looking at the distance from the point of intersection between the tangent and the secant, the distance from that intersection point to the point of tangency. And if we square that distance, it gives us the same as the product from our point of intersection to the first place where the secant meets the circle times the distance from our point of intersection to the second point where the secant meets the circle. So it's like we take the two, the lengths of the two secants, both of those secant intersection points the distance from there to the intersection of the tangent and the secant line is equal to the tangent part squared. And that is called the tangent secant theorem. And just like with the, uh, with the chord theorem, it's a relationship between sides that allow us to solve number problems, sometimes real world problems, where we've got some distances and we're not able to measure other distances. Um, so that is another powerful technique and so, take advantage of, of knowing this fact, kind of commit it to memory or, or commit it to uh, a reference sheet. And then you can use that in order to solve real world problems.